Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. Welcome on this Tuesday, primary election day in my home state of South Carolina. Go vote. Polls will be opening at 7 a.m. and will remain open through 7 p.m. Go vote. That's all. It's so important that you take the time. I know things can get busy. You can get, get distracted, but you have to go vote today. Things got off to a fast start yesterday in Hunter Biden's trial. After closing arguments by both sides, the six-man, six-woman jury began deliberations around 3.30 p.m., according to the New York Post, breaking for the day one hour later. They are expected to return later this morning. And Hunter's dad may be losing his job. Nate Silver, the polling maestro, yesterday suggested that President Biden's latest disapproval ratings might be enough to cause democrats to start looking for someone else might be a uh, cause for the democrat front runner to drop out of the 2024 presidential election i've been saying i don't think biden will be the candidate last week representative ralph norman on this show said that he didn't believe joe biden's name would be on the ballot in november are you believing us yet U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon rejected attempts to dismiss more than half a dozen charges against former President Donald Trump yesterday related to his alleged mishandling of classified documents. And Nancy Pelosi says, I take responsibility for not having National Guard at the Capitol on January 6th in a video shot by her own daughter. We have the audio for you to hear. South Carolina Representative Nancy Mays still appears to be in the good graces of former President Donald Trump. He re-upped his endorsement of the GOP congresswoman yesterday after previously blasting her as a, quote, absolutely terrible candidate. Uh, Mays is facing two opponents in today's primary for South Carolina's first congressional district. I told you we'd be back. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Let's start with a story out of the New York Post. Trial Judge Mary Ellen Norica kicked off proceedings yesterday morning by overruling many of the defense team's objections to her proposed instructions to the jury. Much of the morning was taken up by sidebars between both sides over issues like the definition of reasonable doubt and firearms dealer, as well as the immunity granted by prosecutors to both uh, Hallie Biden and uh, uh, Keston. The judge and attorneys also discussed how jurors can request to see certain physical exhibits, including the gun at the center of the case, during their deliberations. Defense attorneys had argued in their proposed jury instructions that, quote, the overly expansive definitions of what it means to be a drug user and to possess a firearm would deny Hunter Biden a fair trial. Now, what exactly, how else could you define drug user? Or how else could you define possession of a firearm? I mean, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Isn't it? It's pretty simple if you're a drug user. You, you abuse drugs. It's pretty simple uh, of, of a concept to possess a firearm. You have it in your possession. You have it on your person. It's in your pocket. It's slipped into your into your pants. It's in your jacket. This is what defense attorneys do, I guess, though. They also contend that any conviction obtained using those instructions cannot be sustained on appeal. Hunter Biden arrived at the courthouse around 8 a.m. yesterday, followed by his stepmother, First Lady Jill Biden. 
uh, Biden, Jill Biden has been in attendance for every day of Hunter, her stepson's trial, but one, she missed Thursdays of last year to fly to France to help her, <laughs> her, uh, 81 year old husband on the 80th anniversary of D-Day help, help him know when to sit and when to stand. Hunter's half sister, Ashley was back in court yesterday morning where she's been a constant presence alongside, uh, Hunter's, uh, her, her brother, the first son. Uh, also by his side was his sugar brother, Kevin Morris, the one who paid the millions of dollars in back taxes. And the president's sister, Valerie Biden, Owens was there. Jill's sister, Bonnie Jacobs was there. And the first brother, James Jim Biden, also attended yesterday's proceedings. He had been floated as a possible defense witness, but was never called to testify so here's what happened yesterday according to testimony hunter biden tried to meet up with a since convicted drug dealer the day before he lied about his crack cocaine use in order to buy the 38 caliber revolver that's the center of this this uh, case on the evening of october 11th 2018 according to text messages hunter told a contact to, quote, meet me 7-Eleven at 3. President Biden's son had spent part of the previous two days trying to arrange a rendezvous with the person who was saved in his contacts simply as Q. Can you meet me at 7-Eleven now, question mark, the text said. He, he was asking us on the afternoon of October 10th, 2018, only to be called, told by Q, who also called himself J.R., couldn't make it right away. It's unclear if the two ever did actually meet before Hunter stopped at the StarQuest Shooters and Survival Supply in Wilmington on October 12, 2018, where he purchased the gun. The DailyMail.com identified Hunter's contact as Eladio Otero, Jr., who pleaded guilty in June of 2023 to one count of a using a, a, a communication device to facilitate a drug conspiracy as part of a deal with Delaware federal prosecutors. Otero was sentenced to 15 months in prison and a year of supervised release on those charges. In addition to the federal rap, Otero was convicted in 2010 of second degree assault in Maryland in connection with a 2007 armed robbery. Real stand up guy here. This Q is uh, the, the type of guy that you would expect Hunter Biden to be hanging out with. The messages to Q were a focal point of a brief rebuttal appearance by FBI agent Erica Jensen, who was recalled to the stand by prosecutors to counter defense claims that Hunter was not in the grip of a crack addiction at the time he bought the Colt Cobra. Prosecutor Derek Hines noted that Hunter Biden referenced the convenience store in question both before and after the gun purchase, suggesting that it was his regular spot to purchase these drugs to begin with. But defense attorney Abe Lowell noted that the messages from before the gun purchase had no location data confirming where Hunter Biden was at the time. He asked Jensen at one point, was he going to meet Q or getting a cup of coffee? You always got to be able to create that doubt. Jensen said, I don't know who uh, had analyzed evidence from the, uh, from Hunter's notorious laptop. I have no further context. He said an email recovered from Hunter Biden's hard drive also shows that he withdrew $800 from his Wells Fargo checking account on the evening of October the 11th. Now, uh, the importance of this, the significance of this is that in line with behavior testified to by Hunter's ex-girlfriend, Zoe Castan, who told prosecutors last week that her, uh, her former boyfriend routinely removed large sums of cash to buy drugs, even giving Castan and at least one other dealer access to codes to pull the money out from the account themselves, sort of a self-service type thing, uh, or a auto drawdown. Authorities were able to recover location data from a text that Hunter had sent to his sister-in-law, uh, turned lover, Hallie Biden, at around 
4 a.m. on October the 16th, 2018, in this same general time period, which placed him at the 7-Eleven about an hour later. Lowell said to Jensen, sometimes we had text messages without location data. Sometimes we had location data without text messages. Hunter's defense team called just three witnesses, including Hunter's eldest daughter, Naomi, before they rested their case yesterday afternoon. After closing arguments by both sides, the six-man, six-woman jury began deliberations. Around 3.30 p.m., they broke for the day about one hour later. Again, they'll be uh, expected back in court today. In other legal news, not surprisingly, U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon rejected attempts to dismiss more than half a dozen charges against former President Donald Trump yesterday related to his alleged mishandling of classified documents. Trump has been accused of mishandling classified documents, as you know, that were uh, stored at his Mar-a-Lago resort. Judge Cannon has rejected other attempts in the past, including an argument that his actions were protected under the Presidential Records Act. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutritious. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids. Be able to, to hike and, and walk and Uh, Maybe play a full 18-round hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. And speaking of primaries, boy, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting tonight as we watch some of these races that we have heard about now for months unfold. Are you glad that election day is finally here, so that we are not bombarded by mail pieces, by emails, by text messages? My phone has just blown up over the past few days. And have you noticed how these political texts, you don't have to opt in? Now, when we do a text at the radio station or when I do a text for my podcast, I'm always warned that you you can only do this when you allow people to opt in. But I've never opt in to a single political text, and I get them constantly. I, I mean, I'd be afraid to tell you how many text messages I received yesterday alone. Uh I would get one for one candidate telling me why I shouldn't be voting for another candidate. Uh, Endorsement reminding me that certain candidates have been endorsed by somebody, you know, whether it's Trump or uh, Henry McMaster. Text messages telling me why one one state rep shouldn't deserve to be reelected. I mean, it's just been endless. But today is the day. Today is judgment day. For, uh, for these politicians. Uh, one of the races that is going to be watched, not only for us here in South Carolina, but across the nation, is that of South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace in South Carolina's congressional first congressional district. Now, Mace has had a love-hate relationship with Donald Trump. She supported him, and then she kind of turned on him. Yesterday... Uh, and, and and by the way, Trump endorsed her early on, endorsed her reelection. Yesterday, he kind of um, re-endorsed her, if you will. As he posted on True Social, 
It is my great honor to endorse a strong conservative voice for South Carolina's first congressional district. Nancy Mace worked hard campaigning across South Carolina in support of our record-breaking win. In Congress, she is fighting to secure the border, strengthen our military, support our veterans, uphold the rule of law, stop political weaponization, and protect and defend our always under siege Second Amendment. Congresswoman Nancy Mace has my complete and total endorsement. South Carolina, get out and vote tomorrow. This was a truth social post that, that Trump posted yesterday. His reminder to South Carolina voters in the 1st Congressional District specifically is that he's backing Miss Mace in today's primary. It, it comes, though, after... She, he did not endorse her in 2022 in the midterm elections over what the former president viewed as disloyalty after the January 6, 2021 riot protest, whatever you want to call it, at the Capitol. Uh, May said in an interview with CNN a day after Trump supporters uh, attempted to prevent the certification of Joe Biden's 2020 election victory uh, as the, the day that we infamously know as January 6, 2021. She said everything that he's worked for, his entire legacy was wiped out yesterday. And we've got to start over, she said. We need to hold the president accountable, she said, later that month, condemning Trump during a House floor speech. Trump opted against endorsing Mace in her 2022 race because of these remarks. He actually went after her saying that she's absolutely terrible. She's the, uh, an absolutely terrible candidate and disloyal to the Republican party. He claimed at the time, the next year, the South Carolina Congresswoman reportedly took a shot at the former president supporters behind closed doors. Mace, one of eight GOP lawmakers who voted to oust former South uh, house speaker, Kevin McCarthy in October wore a t-shirt to the Capitol emblazoned with a red A days after the vote. There was a widely circulated photo of Miss Mace standing outside of the Capitol with her white T-shirt and this red A on it. She reportedly complained to her staff that people didn't understand her distinctive shirt was a reference to the scarlet letter were probably Trump voters, she said. This, this according to an article in Slate magazine. Then Mace endorsed Trump in January 2024, and the 45th president returned the favor in March of this year, saying, I don't see eye to eye perfectly with any candidate. This is Mace's endorsement of of Trump. This was on X in January, explaining that her endorsement of Trump, uh, she said, "And, and until now, I've stayed out of it, but the time has come to unite behind our nominee. An Emerson College Hill survey last month found that Miss Mace is leading her main GOP uh, primary rival, former South Carolina state official Catherine Templeton, by a pretty substantial margin. Still, she faces uh, a a tough hill to win this on the first ballot because there's also a third candidate taking some of her support away. Gabrielle Lipsky, a rep for the South Carolina Republican, told the Post, uh, the, the Post and Courier, Congresswoman Mace is the endorsed candidate, having not only reconciled with President Trump, but now sharing an unbreakable bond. She stands unwaveringly with President Trump and his supporters, fully committed to making South Carolina and America great again. On the Slate piece, Lipsky said any attempts to undermine Mace's support for President Trump or the conservative base are deceitful and desperate. So it's going to be interesting to watch this race because uh, she needs to win this tomorrow night. And with two other candidates, the likelihood of her being able to do that is probably not too good. Catherine Templeton spent a lot of money. She will be a competitor. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message and your emails are always welcome, Joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? 
Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com dawpickens.com I've been telling you for some time now that I don't think Joe Biden will be the Democrat nominee. I, I'm just not convinced that his name is going to be on the November ballot when we go into that polling booth in November to make our decision. Polling uh, a polling guru that is well known in the political world says that uh, this is Nate Silver. He's founder of 538. He said yesterday that President Biden's latest disapproval ratings might be enough to cause the Democrat front runner to drop out of the 2024 presidential election. Now think about that for a minute. Uh, Silver posted this yesterday. He said, but Biden just hit a new all-time low in approval, 37.4% at 538 yesterday. Dropping out would be a big risk, but there's some threshold below which continuing to run is an even bigger risk, he said. Are we there yet? I don't know, but it's more than fair to ask the question. And he's right. He went on to state that Democrats would have been given a a fighting chance if the 46th president had eliminated himself from the upcoming election much earlier. He's right there, too. Joe Biden should have stepped aside long ago. Joe Biden should have never even gotten into the race. He should have been talking with his Democrat colleagues about who a good replacement would be. I think part of the reason Joe Biden was felt like he was being pushed to run for another term is they don't know what to do with Kamala Harris. They have no clue where the, where, the vice president will go. They do know this. They know that if Joe Biden drops out, she believes that she's the heir apparent and she's not going to go away quietly. So all this talk about Gavin Newsom potentially coming in on his uh, uh, white horse to save the Democrat party is going to be tough because waiting there for that white horse is Kamala Harris, and she's not going to go away without a fight. So they're in a real dilemma because they have a candidate by way of Joe Biden who can't win if you have any confidence whatsoever in polls. Silver wrote, what's clearer is that Democrats would have been better served if Biden had decided a year ago not to seek a second term which would have allowed them to have some semblance of a primary process and give voters a say among the many popular Democrats across the country. He went on to say, if I told you 10 years ago a president would seek re-election at 81 despite a supermajority of Americans having concerns about his age, and then we'd hit 8% inflation for two years, you wouldn't be surprised he was an underdog for re-election. You'd be uh, uh, surprised that it was even close. And it shouldn't be close, should it? He's right. Uh, Under the current conditions of the Biden administration, it really shows you just what shape our country is in, that we're this divided. Now, thank goodness that Donald Trump leads most of those polls. And he leads in all of the averages. And and even in some of the uh, most of the battleground states. But it shouldn't be close, not with the economy the way it is, not with uh, the way Joe Biden has literally allowed our southern border to be open and allow people to pour into our country and just destroy 
cities, destroy uh, the, the services of uh, of military and elderly people. I heard a story just the other day. I think this was in maybe the Phoenix area where a nurse was talking about that they could not care for the elderly and veterans in that hospital because they were too overwhelmed by illegal aliens. And she felt bad about it because she, she knows that she sh- should be taking care of American citizens. She knows that she should be taking care of people who are in that community legally, but it's hard for them to do. Silver goes on um, responding to a, a critic who accused him of focusing too much on why Biden should drop out and not enough on former President Trump. Silver said he believed Trump should also bow out of the race. Uh, Silver wrote, Trump should drop out too. It's such a weird dunk on people who are pointing out that Biden has big challenges. Yes, Trump should drop out. I agree. Biden would lose by seven points against a different candidate, but I agree the Republican Party and the country would be better served by a different nominee. So we have this top-ranked pollster basically saying that both parties is getting it wrong, that Joe Biden should throw in the towel, and so, so should Donald Trump. For different reasons, of course. I'm sure, I'm sure Silver is saying this about Trump because of the legal issues that Trump is finding himself in, primarily because of the Democrats. Uh, Biden and some of his top advisors reportedly don't believe the bad poll numbers. They don't want to admit it. And look, it, it's hard to believe that, isn't it? It's hard for for us to look at negative information like that None of us want to be in a position to where we don't feel wanted and appreciated. But I would think that a seasoned politician like Joe Biden is supposed to be somebody who has has lived on the public dole for most of his life. He knows how to read a poll. He knows how to read uh, the wind blowing in the direction uh, and, and it's blowing it's blowing against him this year probably for the first time in his political career but it should be he's 81 years old and, and just watching him you can tell there's something wrong with joe biden and, and that's okay again he's 81 years old <laughs> um according to a new fox news poll Trump and Biden are in a dead heat in Virginia, a state that Biden won by 10 points in 2024. And and that just comes back to what Silver is saying here. Uh, this is a close race, and it shouldn't be. He believes it shouldn't be because he, he believes that Joe Biden, as the incumbent, should have a wide margin. I mean, it's a dead heat in Virginia, and Biden won that by 10 points in 2024. Democrats in Virginia are standing on their head. Democrats in Virginia just can't believe that they, they believe they're in a, a nightmare here. They're wanting to wake up because it will also affect the down ballot candidates, the candidates running for the state house, for the state Senate in Virginia, the candidates running for local county council and, and other local elections. It affects all of them. Now, the other thing that this poll, uh, again, it was released last Thursday that that um that nate silver is, is citing it shows biden and trump with 48 percent each in a head on head-to-head matchup in the old dominion state virginia i know i've asked you before but i'd love to know what you think is joe biden gonna be is he gonna be man enough is he gonna be big enough to put himself behind his party to take himself out of this and do what's best for his party and for the nation. Now, look, I don't, I don't like the idea. I would love for Joe Biden to be on the, on the ballot because I think Donald Trump can beat him. And look, there'd be a little satisfaction there for a rematch, wouldn't it? But it also kind of tells you the kind of person that Joe Biden is when he refuses to do so. 
but I just think he's going to be forced off. I think the powers that be within the Democrat Party are going to come to their senses and realize, hey, we got to do something here or we're going to lose everything. Now, I don't. again, I don't know who it is. I don't know who they're, who, who they're going to get to put into that slot, and I don't know what they're going to do with Kamala because they're going to have a fight on their hand. They're going to have a cat fight on their hand with Kamala because she's not going to go down quiet especially if it's her governor, Gavin Newsom from California. Send me your, uh, send me your predictions. You can text me. You can email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Is Joe Biden's name going to be on the ballot in November? Love to hear what your thoughts are. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can, you could trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman, they do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done and you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford doesn't even have to be a Ford they they service all makes and models visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com FurmanFord.com on the text line Michael says I think Ben Carson is a great man he does great things but I don't think he has the fortitude that if needed to be vice president for Donald Trump this is a question I'd ask uh yesterday i think it was about uh as we narrow it down it it appears that there are six names now that are likely vp candidates for donald trump and ben carson was one of those i made the comment i think ben carson's a great guy he's accomplished a lot he checks a lot of boxes um i don't know we'll see supposedly trump is down through the final stages of who that vice presidential candidate will be. Gene writes, Sarah Huckabee would be a fantastic choice for vice president, right? Uh, Sarah Huckabee would be. Uh, But you know, her name hasn't been mentioned that often. Not not by Trump, anyway. Texter says, good morning, Joey. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, too. Appreciate you listening. Texter, what about that money that was found by the state... Why can't they use that for the tax increase or better yet be given to us South Carolina citizens? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about, what was it, $3 billion that just appeared that evidently had been in a state checking account for a few years and state officials, primarily the controller general, Rick, uh, Rich Ekstrom, who eventually resigned because of it. But now uh, it, it'd be too easy to just uh, give that back to the people who paid it or to even use it in place of a tax increase because they're looking for ways to spend it. I don't know that it ever occurred to anyone, well, we'll just give that back to the taxpayers. Your comments are welcome as well uh, via text. You can email me directly, joey at joeyhudson.com. Did you hear about this? This tape that was released that evidently Nancy Pelosi's own daughter videoed her mom in, uh, it appears to be like in in a car. Here's the story. One of Joe Biden's Democrat cronies, Nancy Pelosi, finally admits what Donald Trump has been saying since 2021. The former speaker laid blame on herself for the lack of National Guard troops at the U.S. Capitol on January the 6th, 2021. Video footage, again, that was evidently done by her, produced by her daughter, 
released yesterday by House Republicans. So as protesters storm Congress, Pelosi fumed about the lack of accountability and accepted responsibility for a lack of security ahead of former President Donald Trump's Stop the Steal rally. This video clip shot for an HBO documentary by uh, uh, Alexandra Pelosi shows what the speaker was saying at the time. Here, Listen for yourself. We have responsibility, Terry. We did not have any accountability for what was going on there, and we should have. This is ridiculous. You're going to ask me in the middle of the thing when they've already breached the, the uh, inaugural stuff that, that uh, uh, should we call the Capitol Police? I mean, the uh, National Guard? Why weren't the National Guard there to begin with? They thought that they had sufficient no, resources. There's not a question of how they had been. They don't know. They clearly didn't know, and I take responsibility for not having them just prepare for Pelosi then appeared to chide McCullough for asking her amid the chaos if they should call in the National Guard. The exchange was part of about 45 minutes of footage that was handed over recently to the GOP-controlled House Administration Oversight Committee, this, this according to Politico. A report on the riot authored by House Republicans in 2022 found that Democrat leadership had concerns with the optics of having National Guard troops present at the Capitol building in the aftermath of the summer 2020 Black Lives Matter protest. And as you know, Donald Trump has said all along that he offered to send troops over there and that Pelosi and other Democrat uh, figures, keep in mind Pelosi was speaker at the time, and it was her call. She got to make the final decision on how the U.S. Capitol was protected. There's been many reports that she chose not to accept the help that Trump had offered. Both the House and the Senate sergeant at arms, as well as the chief of Capitol Police, resigned in the days following the riot because of the security breaches. A spokesperson for Pelosi dismissed the video clip, accusing the House Republicans of attempting to whitewash January 6th. Aaron Bennett wrote on uh, X, Numerous independent fact-checkers have confirmed that Speaker Pelosi did not plan her own assassination. Cherry-picked, out-of-context clips don't change that. Three years later, House Republicans are still trying to whitewash January the 6th. It's shameful, unpatriotic, and pathetic. Does this change anything, knowing that what was really going through Nancy Pelosi's mind at the time? Knowing that she realized at the time that she should have accepted the offer? and should have had more security there when she has claimed every since then that she did everything she could to protect the Capitol. It's been an ongoing debate between Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi. Trump has always said that he offered additional security and that Pelosi denied it. Yet, how many years later are people still blaming Trump? The Democrats still pointing the finger at Trump. You think they'll have a different attitude now that this, that this video has surfaced and, and by the way, how did her daughter do this? take this video and, and allow it to be released? Don't you know there's some tense moments in the Pelosi family right now? <laughs> uh, uh, one more thing. We ran out of time yesterday. I don't want to run out of time again today before I uh, get your feedback on this. Uh, in a bid to win over Nevada service industry workers, you heard where Donald Trump vows tax-free tips. I, I want to get your feedback on this as well. During a rally on Sunday in Las Vegas, President Trump said that he would work to make tips tax-free. Uh, again, an apparent appeal to workers in the city's huge service industry, and there's no city in America that has a larger service industry than Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, did, did you see the huge crowd showing up again? Temperatures at the event in the city Sunset Park was around 100 degrees at noon when he took to the stage. Didn't slow him down. Uh, they were passing out water all, all around. The, the Trump campaign, in anticipation of the heat, supplied the rally with free bottled water, tents with air conditioning and shade, misting and cooling stations, and additional medical staff. And they're very good at this. I've been to a number of these rallies, and they anticipate these needs. 
I watched them do it uh, in upstate South Carolina in Pickens last summer when they had uh, lots of water in, I, I don't know that it got, got to 100 degrees that day, but it was very hot. And we had, unfortunately, we had people passing out. And thank goodness that the Pickens First Baptist Church opened up their uh, their hall, their fellowship hall, for people to come in and, and to cool off. And even though it was 100 degrees, <laughs> Donald Trump stood on the stage and gave an hour-long speech. He uh, did not endorse a GOP candidate in the state Senate race, the outcome of which could be key as to whether or not Democrats or Republicans control uh, the U.S. Senate. He praised GOP candidate Sam Brown, calling him a good man, but declined to offer a full endorsement of him before today's primary. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and we're going to win in the June primaries and if we're going to win in November especially, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to Just the Truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864 864- Four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special twenty five dollars for the My Towels six piece.